The next mode after CPAP is CMV, or Continuous Mandatory Ventilation. By selecting it, I remain in CPAP whilst I set up the parameters for Continuous Mandatory Ventilation. Breaths per minute, I will leave these at 44. Inspired time, I will leave the same. Peak end expired pressure I will set to 5 millibars and peak inspired pressure to 18 millibars. Then I will press confirm. Under normal circumstances I would set the FiO2 as needed, but for demonstration purposes I will leave it at 100%. Now that I'm in the mode, one can now see the ventilation monitoring. And let's have a look at the screen down the right hand side and what is displayed in that screen. The first parameter displayed is the IE ratio, which is 1 to 2 because theoretically we have no patient interaction. The inspired time is displayed in the inspired time window and the expired time is displayed here. The breaths per minute End tidal volume, minute ventilation and leak percentage, which is the leak around the end of the ET tube, resistance and compliance, which you look at as a trend, and the C20C, which is also a guideline only, and mean airway pressure. Back to the mode of CMV itself, as I said earlier, if you're looking at resistance and compliance, it will indicate what needs to be done with the peak inspired pressure. If resistance increases, you need more pressure. If resistance decreases and compliance increases, you need less pressure. Somebody then has to be in front of the monitor looking at the resistance and compliance and adjusting the peak inspired pressure accordingly. However, there is a way of automating this process and we call this targeted tidal volume or TTV. By selecting TTV plus and switching it on, you get another window along the bottom where you can choose a volume that is appropriate for the patient you are ventilating. The default setting is 3 mils of volume. One has to be a little mindful of selecting less than this as you will be ventilating the dead space and not introducing much fresh gas. I'm going to select a tidal volume of 5 mils. My peak inspired pressure was originally 18 millibars. To achieve 5 mils of volume, I'm only needing to use 14 millibars of pressure. This is important for two reasons. I am reducing the amount of volume in the alveoli, thereby not over distending them, and I'm also reducing the amount of pressure needed. The two points will reduce the amount of ventilator induced injury or volume trauma. When turning TTV on, it is advisable to set the leak compensation to 20%. If the resistance increases, the pressure needed to maintain 5 mils of volume will automatically increase to try and achieve the set volume, but will increase to no more than what was originally set, which in this case was 18 millibar. If the end tidal volume cannot be achieved by the 18 millibars of pressure, you will have an alarm saying low tidal volume. You need to look at the baby to see why there is a low tidal volume and look at things like, is there a large leak, in which case you won't achieve the volume? If the baby has a pneumothorax, you will also not achieve the volume and in this case, you may need to remove TTV+. 
if the resistance decreases and the compliance increases, the peak inspired pressure will continue to decrease whilst maintaining the correct end tidal volume. In CMV, when there is no patient interaction, one area to look at would be in the flow window because with the changing in resistance and compliance, I'm going to pause the waveforms on the screen, looking in the flow window, you may see that the inspired and expired times for that baby's lung mechanics are not correct. Often by adjusting the inspired and expired times for that baby's lung mechanics, you will get better volumes without having to adjust pressures. Inspired time always has to begin and end on the baseline. The expired time has to start on the baseline and end on the baseline. Anything other than that is incorrect for that infant at that point in time. It is important to adjust the low tidal volume alarm when you have TTV on. This is so that you can pick up any partial or complete disconnection. When you have TTV on, the alarm settings are automatically at 3 mils above what you want to achieve and 3 mils below. So in this case, I have set a volume of 5 mils, so the low tidal volume is at 2 mils. However, if there is a partial disconnect, it will take quite some time to register an alarm and you can see this on the screen. Although I have a low tidal volume, it has not quite reached 2 mils yet. If I adjust the low tidal volume to be just 1 mil below what I'm trying to achieve, when there is a partial disconnect, you will get an instant alarm and you can rectify the situation. The other important thing to note is that if you decide to remove TTV for some reason, either because of a large leak that you cannot overcome, for example a pneumothorax, or cannot change the tube, you can't always get the volumes. When you remove TTV, the peak inspired pressure defaults to a safe setting of 5 millibar above the peak inspired pressure. The ventilator knew that you did not need the original full peak inspired pressure of 18 millibars to satisfy the volume requirement. However, now you have to remember to reinstate the peak inspired pressure to the correct level, giving you the correct tidal volume. I have set the peak inspired pressure to 14 millibars and now I'm waiting to see the correct end tidal volume appear. Maybe I need one more, so 15 millibar is giving me the correct volume of 5 mils, which is correct for my infant. If you wish to see in graphic form what is happening, as I said previously, the middle button will take you into loops and waveforms. You have the option of three loops, but you will probably only use two. You have the flow volume loop, and this tells you about the dynamics of the airways, in other words, the resistance the airways are offering to the flow going into the baby. Or you have the volume pressure loop which tells you more about the resistance and compliance. I said earlier about the C20C. If I pause the screen, it is measuring the last 20% of the loop and comparing it to the whole. And if the answer to that equation is less than one, it is an indication, and an indication only, that you may have overdistension of the alveoli, in which case you would look to see if the tidal volume you are using is appropriate. Or you can trend on any measured parameter over a 24 hour period. There is minute volume, peak end expired pressure, mean airway pressure, peak inspired pressure, FiO2 and resistance and compliance. 
If you don't want to look at any of these, you go back to default, you get your three screens back, and the arrow brings the icon back. If while you are looking at a volume pressure loop, you may want to take a picture, and that you can do by pressing the pause button. The camera icon appears. Press the camera. The picture is taken and stored in a folder. Now go back to ventilation and at some other time you can go back and recall that folder and see how it compares to the now current view. To bring up the original and the new curves overlay in red and green. Now you may wish to take a picture of the current loop and so on.